This excerpt from the public television program, The Piano Guy, is brought to you by the Roland Corporation. This is going to be fun. I want to work through the very basics of the tune Here, There, and Everywhere. It's a famous Beatles tune. Actually, Paul McCartney wrote most of this one I, from what we found out, although all these tunes are, are attributed both to Lennon and McCartney. Uh, this is really a nice tune that the chords kind of, they, they come down the path very consistently. It's, it's kind of like a smooth flowing thing. It's not a real fast tune, so it's a fun one to get through. And because as many of these earlier Beatles tunes uh, end up being this way, they didn't use a lot of really far out funky chords and, and jazzy voicings and all. The, they were pretty simple piano players. So the chords, if you just play them very simply in root position, they really sound quite authentic to the tune in many cases. So let's dig right in. Now you know that when I work through tunes, I always love looking at a lead sheet, which is nothing more than a melody line with the chord symbols. And I really think it's advantageous when you learn a tune for the first time to just to just separate it that way into the melody line and the chord changes and really get the basics learned before you start worrying about getting all these other stylistic things thrown in there. So let's go ahead and dig right in with the melody. Now this tune, it's, it's pretty straight ahead. I'll just go ahead and play some of this for you. It starts out that kind of a little three measure, three or four measure intro. And kind of holds off and then starts in. I, can, I need to play some chords with it because you won't know where we are. And so it just keeps moving on from there. Now you know this is a good time to bring up this issue that I talk about all the time, which is to not play a melody line exactly as it's notated. I mean it would be the most boring thing in the world if you sat down and played this with a metronome and that's certainly not the way you'd ever want to sing a ballad or, or play a ballad like this. So really feel free to, to flow a little bit and, and change the tempo a little bit and, and you know kind of play something the way you, you hear it inside or the way you would sing or whistle it or something. So And you can change the volume a little bit too. The, And this one comes down the path slow enough that there's really not any big fingering issues, you know. Every now, that was a little bit of a jump there, I guess. Go to the second section. Excuse me. on and on and on. You can go ahead and read through it that way. So get that melody line comfortable under your right hand. Now let's jump to the other kind of half of the equation, which is the chord symbols. Now in this tune, um, again, we'll, I'll just work through some of these. My suggestion, I guess before I start this, is always to be able to, to get resources in front of you to be able to look up any chords that you don't yet know. Whether that's a chord book or a chord finder, an electronic chord finder, some way, find some way to get a hold of something that has all these chord diagrams in it. So anytime you're working through a lead sheet, if you happen to come across a chord that you haven't learned yet, it's a really fast, easy thing to just go look it up and say, oh, it's those notes, and do it that way. So I will go ahead and play these for you, but instead of you know, spelling each one out, I really suggest you try to get your hands on some sort of a resource to learn these chords. The beautiful thing is once you learn a chord, you've got it locked upstairs for the rest of your life. It's like learning to ride a bike. You never learn how to fall off of it ever again. So here we go. It's a G, move to B minor, B flat. And don't imitate the way I'm fingering these either. Sometimes I'm doing them to make it easier for you to see on TV here. Okay, now we start in the tune. G, A minor, I'll go ahead and play the melody with it. B minor, C, G. So you'll see this pattern goes on quite often in this tune. It goes G, A minor, B minor, C. Does it again. All right, so we go. F sharp minor. That's an E minor to an A7. A minor to D7. And back to this run again. So the same, you just keep hearing those over. Let your ear get used to hearing that. That's why I paused for a second. 
That's another important thing. As you play tunes this way, let your ear get used to hearing the chord progression, where, where it progresses. That's why they call it a progression. And I think you'll be shocked at how much simpler it becomes to memorize these tunes because you can just kind of sense where the chords should be moving if you pay attention to that. Now let's move on to the kind of the bridge section of this tune, which is where it goes. That section, all right? So it starts out on a B flat to G minor. Here's a C minor. D, G minor. Again, these are all just simple chords. Almost all of them are just triads, three note chords, so pretty straight ahead. Oh, and there's that same thing. So let me just play three or four measures here just to kind of do it in tempo, but you just need to get this under hand. Let me go ahead and start right where the, where the melody kind of normally starts. See, I think if you play it just like that, in the case of a tune like this, I think it sounds just fine. There really isn't a whole lot of, uh, I guess, uh, tips and tricks you need to throw on a tune like this. So whatever you're doing, don't do it if you don't have fun. But if you like this tune, I hope you get here, there, and everywhere underhand and always have fun while you're playing piano. This excerpt from the public television program, The Piano Guy, has been brought to you by the Roland Corporation, international manufacturer of the finest keyboards, organs, and digital pianos. To find out more, log on to RolandUS.com.